Hello everyone. So in this lecture, we will be looking into RAID and uh, a brief introduction to distributed file systems. So reading for this lecture is chapter 12 from Dinosaur Book and a few announcements. Uh, there are two new quizzes that are out. So I strongly suggest you to give them a try. And April 29th would be the last lecture uh, of this course. So in that last lecture, we'll be doing a class review of the topics that we have covered through the class and uh, maybe do a brief review of the topics that uh, come in the final. Then final uh, will be on May 3rd. Uh, so it will be similar to midterm where it will be available for 24 hours and uh, you can choose any 90 minutes to take the exam. And the format or rather the type of questions in final would be the same type as in midterm. Okay. So yeah, now let's, uh, let's look at uh, RAID. So before understanding what RAID means, uh, let's try to understand like what are the performance in, like performance bottleneck in disks and how can we improve how can we improve the disk performance so getting first byte from a disk is very slow this uh, th this translates to high latency the, the reason is uh, when we issue a command like when an operating system issues a command to disk read so the command should go to the disk and the disk should move the actuator and the disk head should move to the corresponding platter and it should go to the corresponding track and read the corresponding sector. So there is high latency. Basically the amount of time it takes to read the first block is too high, okay? However, like the consecutive reads would take less time because uh, the disk is already uh, activated. So the, and, uh, the peak disk bandwidth is although good, but it's, rarely achieved because because the disk request the request for the disk could be random right like uh, the operating system might ask to read like block one and then might ask to read like block uh, 512 which again might be in different track so based on the type of requests that go to the disk the delay could be huge that's why the peak bandwidth of the disk is not achievable in reality so how can we avoid these uh, performance impact factors? So how can we get maximum performance from the disks? One thing that we have seen is to use disk caches, like the page cache that we have seen in uh, Linux and Unix based in Linux and Unix based systems, where uh, the disk contents will be kept in memory. So the, whenever we want to read certain file, the files will be read and kept into the uh, page cache or buffer cache and from where all the requests will be served such that uh, the delay or the disk latency is kind of masked by the operating system or rather amortized by the operating system by doing this read ahead. Similarly, write, writes again go to the page cache instead of to the disk that way and then operating system can decide when to perform the writes because now operating system can make the writes more efficient by issuing writes through consecutive uh, two consecutive blocks because it maintains page cache. Okay. So again, uh, so the way operating system can optimize is by doing this scheduling. So operating system maintains page cache. That is the abstraction that it provides. And then when it has to actually write the content to the disk, it can actually do smarter disk scheduling. Like it can actually group all the writes that are to the consecutive blocks and then send requests to the disk once so that the disk performance is maximum because we are writing to consecutive blocks. Uh, that, that's how we can uh, schedule requests with short seeks. Basically the amount of seek the head has to do, the disk head has to do is minimized because now operating system can write to consecutive disks. What else can we try to uh, improve the disk performance? The other thing, is to add multiple disk arms, right? So uh, as we have seen in the previous lecture, 
disk has only one uh, disk head, like the R that reads from the magnetic platter, it has only one. Can we have multiple? I mean, because like if you have multiple, then multiple heads can simultaneously read from the disk platter. So actually, uh, I think, uh, was it Seagate? It must be Seagate, yeah. Seagate actually tried to add multiple disk arms and uh, but it never kind of like commercialized because there were a lot of engineering problems like the disk was getting heated up and uh, there were a lot of mechanical moving parts in in small form factor which led to a lot of engineering complexities and furthermore the cost of adding two disk arms was uh, too overwhelming like it was it was almost comparable to having two different disks itself so it, people like it was easier to buy two disks rather than buying like rather than manufacturing a disk that has two disk arms so it's uh, uh, although it sounds uh, like an interesting choice but in reality adding multiple disk arms is very inefficient or rather it's not feasible or like, rather it's not economically feasible Okay, so in this part, we will look into RAID. So RAID, uh, previously, like before, it, st it stood for like redundant array of inexpensive disks. Okay. And now it stands for redundant array of independent disks. So basically, the, uh, in RAID, we try to overcome limitations of disks by using multiple disks. So where disk, like each disk is like independent, right? So we, we try to use multiple disks to achieve maximum performance, like to, to achieve maximum performance. That was the initial motivation when it was like, when uh, the, the primary, like when, when multiple disks was, uh, were used before, the primary goal was performance to get maximum disk throughput. Okay? But today, things have changed a bit. Today, people are more concerned about re, uh, reliability. Like, can we use multiple disks and get, like, and be resilient on disk failures? So can we have more resiliency to disk failures? Can we recover data when the disk fails? Right? And so there are, previously it was mainly performance. Now, uh, people have moved to reliability, like using multiple disks to improve disk reliability Previously, it was using multiple disks to improve disk performance. So, yeah. So the the first thing, as I mentioned, is for uh, performance. Right? We can use multiple disks to maximize this performance. One easy way to do it is to split the bits of a byte across multiple disks. So instead of storing one byte in a disk, if we have eight disks what we can do is we can store one bit, given a byte, we can store one bit in each disk, in each disk, okay? Now, when we have to read a byte, we can simultaneously read all the eight bits, okay? Now the read performance increases drastically, right? Because now instead of reading eight, instead of waiting to read eight bits, now with with the, with the time it takes to read one bit, we can actually read eight bits because there are eight disks, okay? And at the same time, we don't lose the space because we are getting the space of eight disks because the, we are now uh, splitting data across multiple disks. We are not wasting any disk space. Okay? And it reduces the response time because we can simultaneously read. And similar, I mean, uh, instead of bit level splitting, or like uh, bit levels, uh, and this process is called striping, like where we actually split the data across multiple disks. And uh, this method is called striping. Okay. So instead of bit level uh, striping, we can do block level striping, where uh, uh, multiple blocks, like uh, con consecutive blocks, will be spread across different disks. So logically, when the disk the interface disk provides will be uh, the logical interface where the disks, uh, where the blocks are numbered from zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth. But inside they will be stored 
in a striped manner where block one will be stored in disk one, block two in disk two, block three in disk three. And then let's say we have three disks and then block, uh, block four will be stored again in disk one, block five in disk two, block six in disk three, so on and so forth. So the blocks are striped across all these disks. So this here, as you can see, this, this improves the performance by the factor of the number of disks. The more disks you have, the more performance you get because that's how much, like that's, uh, that's the level of parallelism you get, right? So now you can parallelly read so many disks, so many blocks at the same time, depending on the number of disks you have. And here, the main goal is performance. There is no reliability. Like if one disk fail, you still lose the data, right? However, performance is uh, very good. The other idea of using multiple disks is for reliability. So here the goal is uh, in simple words, like we store data in multiple disks. We store the same, same data in multiple disks so that if one disk fails, we still have data from, uh, from the other disk, okay? And however, like we can, can have the case, we can have cases where both the disks fails in which case, of course, we lose all the data, but the probability of two disks failing uh, is uh, is quite less compared to uh, failing of single disk. Okay. And the RAID, the modern RAID, the RAID, uh, it, uh, the RAID as it evolved, initially it was just for performance, but now RAID standards as the standards have come up, they're trying, we, we, we try to mix both the ideas. So can we have multiple disks? And then can we have both performance and reliability at the same time, okay? So note that uh, mirroring gives reliability. Like if we just store the data at multiple places, the same data, it gives reliability, but it's expensive because we are, uh, uh, we are losing the space. We are storing the same data at multiple locations. Although we get reliability, we are wasting space. And striping gives high data transfer rate, but there is no reliability. Like if you lose the disk, if the disk fails, this data is still lost, okay? So can we combine both of these aspects? Can we do both striping and also mirror the data, okay? This is the challenge and different RAID uh, configurations are like, are trying to weigh between reliability and performance, okay? So different rate configurations, they change uh, the vary between the amount of importance they give to performance versus amount of importance they give to reliability. Okay. Now let's look into different rate configurations or these are called different uh, rate levels as well. So let's look into different rate levels. So rate level zero, it's the standard, it's the initial RAID. I mean, here there is no reliability, okay? The data that belongs to a file is striped across multiple disks, okay? So here you have four disks and uh, the data that belongs to a file is actually striped across multiple disks, okay? So note that when you have, when you're having a disk from the user's perspective, the blocks are like block zero, block one, block two, but how they are stored, that will be controlled by the RAID controller, okay? So here, uh, the data is striped, the data that belongs to a file is striped across all the disks. Note that there is no reliability because if one disk fails, there is still data loss, okay? However, uh, the data loss is kind of limited or rather it's spread, spread across multiple files. For instance, here, let's say one of the disk fails, it's not, like the, the failure is the uh, is split across all the files, right? So you kind of lose small amount of data in every file, okay? And this also gives uh, some properties of recovering the data, right? Like even let's say if you lose some data from multiple files, maybe it's easier to recover rather than losing the whole file where there is no way to know whether, uh, like how to recover the file. See, so here the read throughput is maximum because 
it's parallel. Like now if I have to read three blocks, depending on like three consecutive blocks, I can read in parallel because three consecutive blocks, they will be stored in three different disks. And of course I can read them in parallel. And write throughput is maximum. If I have to write consecutive blocks, I can write in parallel. And uh, there is no redundant info. So the utilization is also maximum. So here, but reliability is zero. So there is no reliability. So there is no way for, uh, there is no way to recover any data whatsoever if one of the disk fails. Next is RAID level one. So here it's similar to RAID level zero, but here we have mirrored disks. So here we actually store data at multiple locations. We store the same data at multiple locations. So when the, uh, so here the read performance is actually doubled because compared to RAID zero, because now read, you can actually either read from uh, like one of two disks because the same data is present in two set of disks, right? Either in the regular disks or from the mirror copies. So read performance is doubled. But the efficiency is half because half of the disks, we are storing the same data as the other half. So efficiency is half, but read performance is doubled. And the write performance is same as rate zero because uh, we just, we're just writing more, but it doesn't affect the original write performance, right? Because we are just uh, writing at multiple locations. So, but the only problem here is like, it's expensive because we don't, uh, we are storing every data twice. So we are losing half of the disks to just store uh, redundant data. Okay. Note that any loss can be recovered. So any data that gets lost can be now easily recovered because we always store two copies of the data. Okay. So before looking into other RAID levels, uh, let's briefly look into uh, an error correcting mechanism called parity. So let's say if we, if we want to detect like one bit error in a bit stream, okay? So parity is a common technique that is used to do it. So here, the basic uh, parity, like if I have a bit stream, so the basic parity is uh, just to XOR all the bits, okay? Whatever bit that you get, is good enough to detect if there are any errors in the bit stream. For instance, uh, 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 the parity could be as simple as, like yeah, when you XOR all the bits, it is similar to, uh, okay, the, the, the simplest parity is just counting the number of bits that are set, okay? So if the number of bits that are uh, set is odd, then the parity is one. If the number of bits that are set is even, then the parity is zero. Okay, let's consider that as parity. So now, if we have, if we find any change in the bit stream, any one bit change, parity will detect it, right? Because let's consider the bit stream of uh, uh, zero one one zero. So here, the parity of zero one one zero is zero because the number of one bits, number of uh, ones in the bit stream is even. So now when you do the parity along with the parity bits, you should always get zero, okay? Now, let's say there is an error, okay, in the bit stream. So instead of zero, one, one, zero, let's say there is an error in the first bit. So the first bit becomes one. So one, 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 zero, and then when, you, we have the parity computed that is zero. So when we add zero and we compute the parity of the total uh, bit stream and the parity, it is one, which means error. So parity allows us to detect a single bit error. Okay? But parity doesn't tell you which bit errored out, but rather it will just tell you that some bit is errored. Okay? Parity is good to detect errors. So RAID level two is uh, 
bit level striping with Hamming codes. So here we use three disks, like the common configuration of RAID 2 is having seven disks, where the last three disks will be used to store error correcting code. Okay. So here, any, uh, for instance, like one of the error correcting code is Hamming code. So Hamming code allows us to recover one bit errors. So for instance, any, a, a, like a single bit error can be easily recovered or like uh, a, a easily recovered from the data that is stored in ECC disks. Okay, so here we have three disks that are storing uh, error correcting code, which helps us to detect one bit errors. And we have four data disks where the data is bit level striped. Basically here, uh, the bits that belong to a single byte are striped across multiple disks. Okay. However, this is uh, not used in real world because uh, there are a lot of complications, right? For instance, the problem with the RAID level two is let's say if I have to read byte, first byte, then I need to make sure that all the actuator arms are at the same position in all the data disks because that's how the data will be stored. And uh, uh, like the synchronization should happen across all the disks. So it, uh, like all the arms should move at the same pace and they should be at the same position across all the disks in order to read data in RAID level two, okay? So this has, uh, this has a lot of synchronization issues and it's not used in uh, real world because like any small failure, like it's very hard to synchronize uh, uh, like the actuator arm across multiple disks. So that's one of the, re that's one of the main reason why RAID level two is not used uh, in real world. So note that unlike RAID level one, where we duplicate everything. So here we are just using three disks. So instead of just doubling the number of disks in RAID level two, we are just using three disks. But however, unlike RAID level one, in RAID level two, we can, we can recover from single bit errors, okay? In case of uh, RAID level one, like we can recover the entire, uh, like, the, like we can recover the entire disk failure, but in case of RAID level two, we can only recover like single bit errors. So uh, in now let's look at RAID level three. So here RAID level three uh, is similar to RAID level two, but here we are doing byte level striping. So instead of storing bits, we are striping bytes, okay? So byte zeros get stored in disk one, byte one, disk two, so on and so forth. And instead of having error correcting code, we have parity disks. So the parity disk also provides us failure in case of uh, one complete disk failure. Okay. So in RAID level three, we have four disks and one parity disk. In RAID level three, you always have one parity disk irrespective of the number of data disks that you have. Okay. So and re read accesses are parallel because since the data is striped, so we can simultaneously read data from all the disks. And when we have to write to RAID level three, we need to write to the actual data disk plus to the parity disk, because whenever we change the data, the parity also changes. So we should also write to the parity disk as well. So every write uh, is actually two writes because one to the data disk, another write to the parity disk. Okay. And on disk failure, in RAID level three, let's say one of the disk fails, then we can actually use parity disk in place of that failed disk to recover all the data, okay? So RAID level three provides us uh, reliability where one of the disk can sustain failure. So one complete disk, if it fails, you can always use the parity disk to compute uh, the data. Okay. 
So RAID level four here, similar to RAID level three, but it does block level striping. So in RAID level three, note that it is byte level striping. So consecutive bytes are stored across different disks. Whereas in RAID level four, it's the consecutive blocks, those are stored in different disks. So the, the data disk are like striped across, the data blocks are striped across multiple disks. So here block zero will be stored in disk zero, block one in disk one, block two in disk two, block three in disk three, so on and so forth. And then we also have parity disk that stores uh, the parity block. So here, writes are good because it allows large writes because like now we, I can write uh, like multiple blocks at the same time. Unlike uh, RAID level three, where if I have to write multiple blocks, I need to uh, like stripe multiple bytes and then write multiple bytes at the same time, multiple bytes, but multiple bytes at a time. Whereas in RAID level four, I can do multiple blocks at a time. So, and uh, when I have to write uh, small writes, for instance, like when I have to write a single block, then I need to do like two reads and two writes, right? So for instance, let's say if I have to write a single block, uh, let's say I have to write stripe two. So here before writing, now I need to read the old, stripe two, okay? And then old parity, okay? Compute the parity without stripe two, because basically XOR uh, parity with stripe two. Write the new value of stripe two, okay? And then compute the new parity with stripe two, and then store the, uh, store the parity into the parity disk. So as you can see, every write now has two reads and two writes, one to the actual disk, one to the actual parity, okay? And note that there is heavy load on parity disk because every write now has to write to parity disk. So irrespective of wherever we write, we always write to the parity disk. So there is heavy load on the parity disk, okay? And furthermore, like what happens when the parity disk fails? We kind of lost everything, right? So we are relying a lot of, uh, we, we, we are relying a lot on the parity disk because every time we are writing to it, and then if, if parity disk fails, we, are, we kind of lost our reliability argument. Okay. So, and the, and the fact that we are writing to it heavily and the probability of parity disk failing is large. So there is high chance that parity disk might fail and the fact that we are relying on parity disk a lot is not good. So that is the disadvantage of RAID level four. In RAID level five, it tries to uh, distribute the risk of the parity disk. Here, it's similar to RAID level four, but the parity is spread across multiple disks. So here, instead of storing parity on a dedicated disk, we will store parity in different disks. For instance, here, as you can see, the parity for blocks zero to three is stored in disk four, whereas parity for blocks four, five, six, and seven is stored in disk three, okay? So here we don't, we are not, so now we, we are not susceptible to single disk failure. So even one of the disk fails, we just lose the parity in that disk, right? We still have parity in other disks, which allows us to recover uh, the data from the other disk. And here, performance is good because now since the like there is no competition for the parity writing, we can like when when uh, when we are writing multiple disks, so if the parity belongs to different disks, the parity also can be written in parallel. In RAID level six, it's similar to RAID level five, but in RAID level five, it 
it can sustain only one failure, right? It can sustain only one failure in a block. Whereas in RAID level six, it can sustain two failures, okay? So here in RAID level six, it's similar to RAID level five, but here we store two parities, okay? Two parity bits. So which actually allows us to recover from two errors, okay? And the probability of having two errors, two concurrent failures at the same time is very low. So RAID 6 is actually, I mean, for most of the practical purposes, RAID 6 should provide very good reliability for almost all the use cases that we can think of. Okay. And uh, unlike RAID 5, since now we have to write two parity bits, the write performance a bit, is a bit slower than RAID 5. So where do, where, where is the RAID implementation, right? So we have shown, uh, we have nicely understood the concepts of RAID, but where is this abstraction implemented? In, for most of the, for most of the disk, it is implemented in the hardware itself. So there is a special purpose RAID controller that actually, uh, that actually gives you slot, gives slots for multiple disks. So you just insert multiple disks into this RAID controller and you can uh, configure RAID controller to use one of the RAID configurations and it will take care, okay? And that RAID controller takes care of parity calculation, everything. That RAID controller actually provides you an interface of single disk, but under the hood, it would be using one of the RAID uh, configurations. It can be implemented in software but uh, this means that we would be investing CPU time in doing the disk management, right? Because uh, the rate, uh, like now the calculation of the parity, everything has to be done by CPU. So we are wasting CPU instead of doing uh, user work, we would be doing like some uh, maintenance work. Okay. So most common configuration is uh, most commonly used in like servers is hardware RAID where there is special purpose RAID controller, which provides slots for the disk and it gives us abstraction for my, of multiple disks. So in the next part, we will look into distributed file systems. Thank you.